the next award is the Thomas E. Brennan Lifetime Achievement Award. And Mark Wersick is uh, uh, going to uh, uh, present the nomination for that award. Thanks, Mark. I have the distinct uh, pleasure today to introduce Judge David McKee as the Thomas E. Brennan Lifetime Achievement Award winner for 2015. I've known Judge McKee for 30 years. Um, frankly, he's the reason that I became a lawyer. As a young, um, as a young political activist, straight out of college, I took a job with the Michigan Republican Party and started working with a person on the um, State Central Committee named David. He was then known as David. I noticed him immediately as a particular smart, passionate advocate for his views. He was always well prepared. He was always um, careful in his selection of words and always advocating for his position in a passionate and thoughtful way. He's an East Lansing native. Having graduated from East Lansing High School in 1964. You. You're welcome. <laughs> and then he turned to the dark side. And he graduated from the University of Michigan in 1968. From the law school in 1971. And then he came back and started uh, at Australia Law School with um, Foster Swift. He was there from 1971 to 1992. In 1992, uh, President George H.W. Bush uh, appointed him to the um, United States District Court for the Western District of Michigan. And in, 19, in 2005, uh, President George W. Bush uh, appointed him to the United States Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit. Um, he has served on dozens of judge committees, uh, some of which appointed by the Supreme Court. He's um, his deep, he has deep roots in Ingham County. Uh, he has always been here. He was here in private practice. He housed the uh, federal district court in Lansing when he was the district court judge, and his six circuit chambers are here in Lansing. He is our Ingham County six circuit judge. Today, Judge McKee is an adjunct professor at the University of Michigan Law School <laughs> and an adjunct, adjunct professor at Michigan State University Law School. <laughs> at both schools, he teaches the he teaches federal courts, uh, and he's also a frequent speaker uh, at at dozens of different um, educational programs. He's an author, legal scholar, active volunteer. He's on the MSU uh, Law School board of directors among others. He's a founding master of the MSU Law School into court and a fellow with the State Bar Association Foundation and other uh, several dozens of other activities. Uh, Judge McKee has reached uh, professional levels within the judicial branch of our federal government that I believe that no other uh, lawyer in Ingham County history has ever achieved. Uh, professionally there can be no question that uh, Judge McKee warrants the, um, the Thomas E. Brennan uh, Lifetime Achievement Award for the Ingham County Bar Association. He's proud of his professional accomplishments, and so are we. Um, but it's really his uh, personal, that when you get to know him, <clears throat> that I'm sure not all of you know him the same way I do, um, when you get to know him, you'll understand that he's most proud of being a husband and a father and a grandfather. Together, he and his uh, wife, Nancy, have six children and nine grandchildren. Some of you probably do not know that he is a very handy carpenter. He is. He built the family cottage in Grand Haven, and when the family entourage, the whole clan with the nine grandkids, um, outgrew the, uh, the cottage, Nancy decided to buy a new one. 
and it needed a little bit of renovation. So David took the garage and and uh, with his carpentry skills and made a playroom and bunkhouse for the for the grandkids to stay. When you listen to that story and others that that uh, he would he would tell you in a much more articulate way than I did, um, you'll find that um, that his true joy in life is, is his family. Personally, he's left a lasting impression on me. Now, he's probably left a lasting impression on many of you who appeared before him as well, but in a different way for me. I share um, a many of my experiences with Judge McKee with the young lawyers at my firm, and the, I've been an adjunct at Cooley for about 20 years, and I tell all of my McKee stories in my classes, so I've tried to pass on these McKeeisms, as I call it. The first one um, was um, my very first assignment at Foster Swift as a first year associate. David McKee was in a trial at the Michigan Public Service Commission, and he asked me to help him with a research project on some issue in evidence. And he said to me, when I used to do this, we would find this in the PUR Digest. And I'm like, all right, whatever. So I went and I said, fresh out of law school, just passed the bar exam, I ace the evidence stuff. So I went to the core mix and I couldn't find anything. I went to the West Reporter. Young people, do you know what the West Reporter is? <laughs> Did all of the research, I've been there for days. He's in the middle of trial, right? I didn't really understand that at the time. He summoned me to his office and he said, what did you find? And I said, geez, you know, I went here and I went there and I did this and I looked and I got to read dozens of cases I can't find anything. And he says, what do you think? Did you see, did you look in the PUR digest? <laughs> oh, okay. So I learned right there after that the PUR digest stood for Public Utility Reporter. Hmm. I found it immediately in the Foster Swift Library, flipped open to the evidence section of the index, and there was a key number right on point with a Michigan Public Service Commission case reported that answered a question. It took like four minutes. And it took me several days in the middle of the trial. So what do you learn from this? Well, I, what I try to what I try to pass on to um, my students and our, our younger lawyers at the at the at my firm is that younger lawyers may think you know a lot, um, but the seasoned lawyers who've never seen the library have a lot of of uh, of, uh, of things to share that they know that they've experienced and that they want to share. So when they tell you, young lawyers, when the one experienced lawyers tell you. Hey, you should go to the PR digest. Go to the PR digest. <laughs> the second McKeeism uh, that I share with my students and the young lawyers is that this was a, a different assignment. And again, uh, this time with with uh, very little direction, Ms. Doug and Judge McKee said, Mark, I want you to take a look at this question. He, this time he didn't tell me where to go other than to the library, what resources to utilize. Um, and I was pretty disappointed about that. But I spent days in the library scouring cases, cases, and read dozens of cases, and I couldn't, I couldn't find the answer to his question. And again, I get summoned to his office. He said, "Mark, what'd you find?" Well, I summarized everything. Yeah, this is, this, these are the cases I read. This is what the facts were. I report. I briefed every single case for him. And then I started. I don't know what the answer is, but you know what I think. It, and I, immediately I was interrupted. I really don't care what you think. <laughs> what I care about is what the court said. Uh, so the moral of the story here, folks, is that as smart as you think you are, what really matters is what the courts have said. Right or wrong, although um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's only with this uh, careful analysis sort of with disregard for your bias, your personal biases. And that you'll actually do the best work and you'll, you'll do the best on behalf of your clients. Objectivity is an important skill in lawyers. 
And it's one that's difficult to train, but you know, it's really difficult to train to a lawyer of the age of 25 because we all know how smart we are. So I learned a lot from Judge McKee. Uh, things that I hope made me a better lawyer. Uh, and I hope those things I can pass on to, to um, other lawyers uh, as well. Although there were uh, several other lawyers that participated in, in this, um, in the nomination process for Judge McKee, including Tony Smith and Frank Reynolds and Pat Gallagher, all of them I appreciate very much. Um, one of the supporters of the nomination, David Marvin, actually put it best in his nominee, uh, his, his letter of nomination of support. And he said, race is a low, excuse me, I try to practice if I do, race is a low winner. Right? The thing speaks for itself. Of course, of course we would honor, the, the, we, would, we, would, we would give the Lifetime Achievement Award to our own Sixth Circuit Judge, Judge David McKee. generous and long <laughs> introduction uh, and for the nomination and all of the, uh, the kind words of the other nominators as well. And I also want to thank the Ingham, the Ingham County Bar Association for this award as well, of course, and, and uh, give my congratulations to my fellow award winners tonight. My first reaction when Mark called to tell me that I would was going to receive this award was to wonder who had received this in the past. And seeing the list of past recipients that's listed in your program, all of whom I've had the pleasure of knowing and respecting over the course of my career, really makes this award all the more special. My second reaction was to wonder if this was a rehearsal for a eulogy. <laughs> if so, who is preparing for my demise? And what do they know that I don't know? My overall reaction, however, is really you heard from a number of the others tonight, is to think back about the many mentors and colleagues that have provided me with so many opportunities and really deserve the credit for whatever I might have achieved in my career. These start, as uh, some of you will recall, with Larry Lindemer, who hired me first as a summer clerk, and then, as Mark said, back in 1971 as an associate at the foster firm. I was actually hired for a one-year position, that's all I anticipated, staying here in Lansing, and that position, of course, lasted for 21 years. They also include a number of other lawyers at the foster firm, like Tony Smith, whose name has already been mentioned and was the 2013 honoree for this same award. Tony trusted me not to screw up Shell Oil Company, which was one of the firm's best clients at the time, and he was supportive of my nomination to the district court while I'm absolutely sure he was wondering what made somebody that was practicing in the government and commerce department think that they could actually be a federal judge. They also include my colleagues in the Western District of Michigan, several of whom were kind enough to drive here tonight, uh, who let me talk them into being one of the first fully electronic courts in the country, install electronic evidence presentation systems in our courtrooms, and started a true mediation program, which later spread to all of the state courts as well. While I got the credit, Joe Scoville, who's here tonight, actually did all the work and, uh, and deserves the true credit for our accomplishments in the district court. Then I moved on to the Sixth Circuit, and my colleagues there let me talk them into going paperless, and I'm pleased to remind you that we were able to abolish the appendix, which all lawyers who practiced in federal court uh, grew to hate. I also want to mention my long-serving uh, Chambers colleagues, Paul Brandenburg, who many of you know has been my judicial clerk for every single day that I have been a district uh, and a circuit judge over the last 23 years. And my assistant, Bonnie Kipp, who wasn't able to be here tonight and worked with me for the last 17 years. 
to both of them, I, I extend my heartfelt appreciation and gratitude for all of their assistance. And they also include really wonderful political friendships that have stemmed from my involvement in politics. They start with Mark, who you've heard from, and they've gone all the way up to include governors, senators, and then ultimately President George H.W. Bush and President George W. Bush, who appointed me to both the district and the circuit court. Uh, I single these individuals out at the risk of leaving many others out because I can't think of a single opportunity that I've been given in my professional life that wasn't made possible by somebody else. And to them, I'm profoundly grateful. And then finally, I want to thank my wife, Nancy. You've heard about Nancy and you've heard about our six children, nine grandchildren. Uh, I just learned tonight that you actually have the pictures of the grandkids in the program uh, for their unwavering support and, uh, and dedication through all of this. I, I really am honored and touched. Thank you very much.